What is up, ladies and gentlemen? This is the Chig coming at you with a World of Warcraft Season of Discovery Phase 2 Hemorrhage leveling guide, as someone has requested it. So, before we get started, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that bell notification icon so you get notified every time I come out with a new video. Anyway, let's hop right into it. First things first. You cannot play Hemorrhage until level 30 because you can't get the ability. So what I would suggest doing for those first five levels is the typical anything you want that has Saber Slash or Improved Sinister Strike or Combat, whatever you want to do. You know, the typical thing where you have the abilities you're using. Maybe you were having the PvP spec. Maybe you were doing something else. Maybe XYZ, you know, push points wherever you want to put them. If you're PvPing, if you're not PvPing, whatever it boils down to. So, once you hit level 30, immediately go to your trainer. And this is for those of you who don't want to use daggers ever to put five points into Master of Deception. This is if you're just going to use Hemo all the time, no matter what. When I was leveling, I did not put my five points into Master of Deception, but my first five points into Opportunity. Now, that's the only thing that changes between the two versions of the build. If you're not going to use daggers ever in your main hand, Master of Deception. If you are ever going to use daggers and you're going to play Mutilate or Backstab or anything ever, five points in opportunity. All right, so now that we've cleared that up, I'm going to put your five points in the camouflage because reducing the cooldown of the skill of stealth is amazing anyway but you also get 15 percent increased movement speed so it's a little easier because you're going to get shadow strike and then once you hit level 30 you're going to get a letter from c and he's going to give you directions to do a very fun quest line to get the shadow step rune once you get the shadow step rune you are all over the place so what i would probably do and what i have been doing when i play hemo I have Shadow Strike on my hands because it's a combo point for 20 energy. It hits really hard if you've got a good main hand. And put Shadow Step on your waist. And basically you are always closing gaps all the time and it's amazing. Secondly, when you are running around and you are questing and stuff, being able to get back into stealth doesn't sound like a lot, but being able to hop back into self five seconds faster when you're going between mobs, especially when you're using Shadow Strike, is going to make it a lot easier to tag mobs. It's going to make it a lot easier to get, you know, in and out of PvP if you need to. It just makes it a lot easier. So there's the two pennies on that. Then you put three points into initiative, 75% chance to add an additional combo point to your target whenever using Ambush, Garrote, or your Cheap Shot ability. I love this. This is amazing. Sometimes you're going to open on somebody with a cheap shot. You're going to get three combo points. You're going to immediately get to five. And as you guys know, as you're playing your rogue, your whole idea of playing it properly is, okay, I have combo points. I have energy. How do I want to spend them? So you have 35, 45 energy, you have five combo points, you have a couple of seconds to make your decision. This is what makes the gameplay of being a rogue so much fun. So here is the difference if you're going to be using daggers. I like to play this with Mutilate as well. If you're playing with Mutilate, I put out a video about that already. You can go check that out. If you're playing with Mutilate, you're going to put your three points into Improved Ambush. If you're not playing with Mutilate, once you get down here, you're going to put points in the straight of blades, but you're going to go ahead and put two points in elusiveness because elusiveness is amazing. It's going to make your vanish cooldown faster. This is really good when we're getting kited because it removes movement impairing effects. It's really good if you're fighting a hunter because it removes hunter's mark, all those things. It's amazing. Here's your next decision. And by next decision, I mean you pretty much have to put your points into serrated blades. All right. So, three points into serrated blades cause your attacks to ignore 0% of your target's armor and increases the damage dealt by your rupture by 30%. That doesn't, like, a lot of people don't use a rupture very much, but especially when we talk about the runes and stuff, if you're using your rupture with your deadly brew, you can literally put a five point rupture on something 
get your deadly brew stacked up to five, and most of the time it will just fall over for you. Especially on top of, you know, now we've got more stuns and things. Then you put two points in improved sap. You're going to come back and put your last point in improved sap eventually, but just to get down the tree, this is going to give you a 60% chance to return to stealth after using your sap ability. Once you get three points in this, the night and day difference in being able to sap someone and not get out of stealth or sap a mob and not get out of stealth is just, it is the best quality of life there could possibly ever be. And it is amazing. All right. Then you're going to put your one point in hemorrhage. Now from here, you're level 30, you're leveling up, you're doing a lot of awesome, fun things. First point, you're going to be like, cool, let me throw this into preparation. No. First point, finish off improved sap. Having that capability is amazing. Do that. Then put a point in preparation. All right. Then put two points in the dirty deeds because reducing the cost of your cheap shot in Garot by 20 is amazing. All right. Having a 40 combo, uh, 40 energy, two to three combo point generator is just chef's kiss, right? Like this is literally mutilate with a four second stun attached to it you know obviously there's no damage but two to three combo points for 40 energy is almost impossible to beat all right then you can put five points in deadliness and then you can put your one point in premeditation so premeditation this is an amazing ability deadliness 10 percent more attack power this is just good like this is a great pvp ability right like nobody's going to argue that it isn't Premeditation, when used, adds two combo points to your target. Must add two or use those combo points within 10 seconds. The combo points are lost. Between Shadow Strike and Shadow Step, you're never going to lose your premeditation combo points ever. Like You're always going to have them. There's no reason to worry about that. You can also get heightened senses if you want to, but the way things are going right now, I wouldn't worry about getting heightened senses. So the other way you could do this, and the way I put it in my other guide, is you could, now these are the first points you have in the other guide, but you just put three points in the improved gouge, and then you put your last three points, or your last, yeah, your last three points in the deadliness. So just having improved gouge is amazing, but since you're kind of leaning into dots with this build, 1v1, you're not really going to be gouging anybody but you are going to have the opportunity pretty frequently to go ahead and gouge another person while you are fighting one, right? So you get five combo points, you dump them on something, tab over, gouge somebody, or pop your slice and dice, gouge somebody, throw a rupture, gouge somebody, whatever it is you need to do. Like I was saying, the only thing you change, if you're never, ever, ever going to use daggers you can just move these points over to master of deception something else that i would say you can do a build just like this just like this without using hemorrhage so if you want to pvp is mutilate you only have to move around a couple points right so you no longer need serrated blades because serrated blades is just to get you down to hemo if you want to use rupture a lot, keep those points, right? Just ignore what I just said. Keep those points if you want to use rupture a lot. If you don't use rupture a lot and you want to do something a little different, you can put some points in improved ambush because you're always going to have a dagger equipped. You can put some points into master of deception to get you further down the tree. But either way, you do not really need to worry about much of this but what you do want to do is get improved gouge two enlightening reflexes three and improved backstab right and then that lets you get preparation and dirty deeds this is what i would do if i was going to mutilate um, i'll make a guide over this too if you guys are interested i just wanted to throw this here at the end just for those of you who are poking around to see what kinds of things you can do or how things might work if you're doing something else right um, so let's talk about the runes real quick. Chest, Deadly Brew. 
Deadly Brews is going to be amazing. You're going to be doing amazing things with this. You're going to be stacking up your poisons. You're going to be doing a lot more damage. You can use Quick Draw if you want. But with our current toolkit, with all of our new runes and all the runes we already had, having Quick Draw, okay, you have a range slow now. Eh, not really worth it. All right. So from there, you are going to um, go ahead and pick up Shadow Strike on your gloves. Uh, if you don't want Shadow Strike, which I recommend Shadow Strike because it's really good, but you can put Shiv on your gloves. I wouldn't really do that. Like, you don't really have a hard time getting your poisons up. And you have a lot of gap closers in the meantime, so I really wouldn't worry about that. But Shadow Strike and Shiv are your options there. Waste, Shadow Step. Just use Shadow Step. Sure, you could use Shuriken Toss. Why waste 60 energy on a ranged combo point builder that doesn't do very much damage? Poison Knife would be good if you really, 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 really are just now learning how to play and you want to use something to get your poison on somebody at, you know... Just use Shadow Step. It's it's a fun quest line, and it's it's just incredible. It gives you movement speed. It moves you around. Um, Mage Frost Novas and Blinks, you can Shadow Step and stun them after the Blink. Like, it doesn't matter. You stay CC'd, but you can still Shadow Step. Legs and Venom. This is your actual choice. All right. So, in Venom, you're going to get stacking up your Deadly Poisons, and it's going to deal extra damage based on how many stacks of deadly poison you have on the target and then it's going to give you higher chance of applying instant poison for one second plus an additional one second per combo point so you can get six seconds of faster applications of instant poison which is amazing by the way you definitely want to use this if you can um your option is between the eyes so the problem with between the eyes and quote unquote problem i say here Range finishing move that causes damage per combo point increased by attack power and stuns the target. So if you want to use between the eyes, cooldown shared with kidney shot. There's a lot of people who are like, oh yeah, we're going to have a ton of stuns. You still only have two. This shares a cooldown with kidney shot. I would like to repeat, this shares a cooldown with kidney shot. Do not think you're going to get both. So with all the gap closers that we have, I would recommend just sticking within Venom, being that guy that just mows people down, and it's so much fun to play. I've been doing both. I've been hopping back and forth. It's just, it's incredible. So go within Venom. And for your feet, I would say Waylay, um, but you're not going to be using either of these abilities if you're not using daggers. And Waylay is currently one of the hardest runes for us to get. Um, you pretty much can't do it solo unless you are a master at gouge kiting, and I am not. Um, so I would recommend getting Master of Subtlety, attacks made while stealth, and six seconds after breaking stealth cause an extra 10% damage. So if you grow out of stealth, it does 10% more damage. If you Shadow Strike, it does an extra 10% damage. I have hit some incredible shadow strikes with my level 25 blue weapons, right? Like, it's really, really good. Um, rolling with the punches, I mean, it's okay. It's easy to get early, so go ahead and get rolling with the punches just to have something on your feet. But then as soon as you hit 30, you can do the quest to get uh, Master of Subtlety. And it's a lot of fun. That quest line is, is a lot of fun. It puts you in the Scarlet Monastery. I'm not going to talk about it right now, but... It's fun. Go knock it out and do that. So that's the runes. There's not a lot of wiggle room for what you're going to change. Um, you can change things here and there, but there's not a lot of wiggle room as far as like what's better, what's worse, what's going to be more effective. The whole thing is if you're playing this build, you are a PvP enjoyer. You're going to be out in the world. You're going to be world PvP in a lot. You're going to be doing battlegrounds a lot. Um, you, you're playing a rogue because you like to be a rogue, not because, oh man, my deeps. Um, this is really good for leveling. Like you are an incredible leveler with this. You do a lot of damage. You get combo points really quickly. Obviously it's not as fast building combo points as mutilate is, but it's still really, 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 really good. All right. Um, if you guys have anything else that you'd like to see, let me know. There's a couple different builds with Mutilate I've been throwing around that I'm trying to play with to see how I can make that work. Um, 
other than that, I hope to see you guys in Abbotsford, and I will see you guys in the next one.